it's been such a fun evening, hasn't it, already? Um, so this, I'll warn you now, has got a fair bit of audience participation in. Mostly about animals, seeing as I'm a biologist. First question, just to warm you up. Anyone recognise what this bird is? Shout it out if you know. Peacock. I'm so glad you said peacock, because it's the topic of this talk. That's not a peacock, as some people pointed out. It's a peahen. Um, this is the female. There is no such thing as a female peacock. It's exactly like saying, oh, that's a female cockerel. It, it literally doesn't make sense. The species is the pea fowl. Um, and so I'm an evolutionary biologist. I did my PhD looking at fruit flies and their behavior, which meant I am a doctor in sexing flies. <laughs> uh, I promise to the parents in the audience I'll keep this scientifically PG. Um, but I often get asked, so how do you sex a fly? Well, first I get asked, what is sexing a fly? It's a lot more safe than it sounds. It's, is this fly male or is it female? So whenever you sex an animal, you're just working out which sex it is. Um, so these are two fruit flies under a microscope. The one on the left is a male and the one on the right is a female. If you're wondering, um, I put them on ice so they don't fly off because it's really hard to sex a fly when they're in flight. Although... My party trick is that I can sex a fly in flight from two metres. <laughs> <laughs> you can test me on it later. Um, but you can see that the one on the left has a little black blobby bit. Um, that is the fly's penis. It's all in that kind of reproductive area. Whereas the female on the right, she ends in a nice little tip. Um, and so often there are... Uh, differences between the male and the female in a species we call the sexual dimorphism and in flies the uh, female is nearly twice the size I mean these are tiny tiny little flies but there's a pretty big difference uh, if ever you do need to sex a fly just remember that if it's got a black belly it's male if it's got a white belly it's female this is only in this one species by the way uh, does anyone happen to have done a genetics class and know what particular species I'm talking about given it's this bog standard fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster. Oh, you're such a good audience. I love this. Um, does anyone know what this translates to? Jew loving, because they, they like the morning Jew. Black bellied fly. Take a look at the flies. <laughs> You'll notice that only the males are black bellied, and yet the whole species is called the black bellied fly. And like, okay, Sally, it's just one species, it really doesn't matter. Anyone recognise this bird? Yeah, it's a, it's a blackbird. It's not a blackbird, it's a brown bird. Um, in fact, juveniles and adult females are both brown. It's only adult males, so far less than 50% of blackbirds are black birds. Anyone recognise this one? This one's a bit harder. It's a black cat. Guess what? Females don't have a black cap. <laughs> You're sensing a theme here. Um, it's not just birds. Anyone recognise this? This is one of my favourites. I love this. Yellow Someone shouted over there. Great crested newt. It's a great newt. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Doesn't have a crest. Only the males have a crest. But it's a great newt if ever you get to see one. Oh, they're fantastic. Um, and so imagine that you're thinking, I don't know, you're a Victorian naturalist, you just caught this butterfly. What am I going to call this butterfly? Anyone know? No. This is the common blue butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> the, the males are a really striking blue, but the females aren't. Um, and yeah, okay, this is all a bit of fun about species names. Um, but it does spread, it's pernicious, it spreads into like important cultural touchstones for people, um, such as B-Movie. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, B-Movie is an animated film. Uh, the main character is a bee, voiced by Jerry Seinfeld, who decides that he wants to escape the hive. He, in doing so, while he's on a pollination trip that he shouldn't have been on in the first place, falls in love with a human woman. Together, they uh, file a lawsuit against the whole human race on behalf of bees in order to stop them stealing their honey. I won't give away the ending, but it's a great, it's not a great film. But, um, 
<laughs> but I, if you were anything like me, you could not move for all the memes that went around about B movie, but every time they say B, it gets faster or whatever. There was everywhere for the last few years. Um, and so, I mean, yeah, great film. Like, what could possibly be wrong with the B movie? So ignoring the fact that, you know, they've only got four limbs, not six, that they have human faces with human teeth. That's the weirdest thing. <laughs> Can you imagine if bees had human teeth? Um, but as an evolution biologist, I find bees super interesting because I particularly studied, like, they're called social behaviours, where what you do affects another individual. And bees are known for their use social behaviours. They're so good at it, they've taken it the next level up. Um, and so we're talking about honeybees here. Honeybees in a hive, you start with the queen. The queen's obviously female. She lays all of the eggs. Nobody else lays any eggs, and that is pretty much her sole job. She is an egg-producing machine. Um, then within the hive, you also have the gynes. So these are going to be next year's queens. These are the reproductive females. Again, they don't really do much. Um, you'll have between a few dozen to a small number of hundred of them. Um, they're just getting ready to be queens next year. They're the virgin queens. Then you've got the drones. These are the only males in the hive. Um, drones are pretty useless. Um, I, I can say the males are pretty useless. It's the same thing in a beehive. Um, all they do is they can't pollinate. They can't go out foraging for anything. They just eat the food that everyone else brings in kind of lays around all day, and then one day they all fly out into this big cloud, have sex, explode, and die. <laughs> um, they're really pretty useless. I mean, the females have got to get sperm from somewhere. They are literally flying sperm sacks. Um, and then in terms of a numbers game, you're looking at a few hundred drones. Um, workers, you're looking at 40 to 60,000 of them. Um, these are the ones that pollinate, that collect nectar, they defend the nest, they build the nest, um, someone's got to build that thing, and they are all female. Which means, given that biology we use a margin of error of about 5%, statistically speaking, you could <laughs> say that 100% of honeybees are female. Um, basically, if you ever see a bee, it is a female bee. You can be so sure of that. So what is the biggest problem with the bee movie? And I mean, those other things that I mentioned, they could be artistic reasons. Sure, having a face means you can express things. Being able to walk upright makes them more human. But why did they choose to switch the sex of the bees? And you're like, Sally, it's just one film. It really doesn't matter that much. Just get over it. Um, but. Someone, some Disney fandom site, counted the sex of all the Disney animals and found that there were twice as many male animals as female animals. It's even worse in TV. I read a stat this morning. I think it's like 17% of non-human animals on children's TV are female. In case you don't know, animals should roughly be 50-50. There are very few examples like the bees where it's very skewed. Um, and you're like, okay, what does it matter, Sally, if kids grow up thinking that all animals are male by default? That doesn't really matter, right? Um, so maybe they want to be a scientist. This is a photo from my own insect ID book. If I want to identify a damselfly and it's female, I'm screwed because they only show pictures of males. I have no idea what the females of these species look like. And indeed, there are species where they're identified, beetles that are identified by the shape of their penises, because penises uh, vary a lot between species. And so we don't know what the females of the species look like, because they all look indistinguishable to us. And you're like, it's just insects. Um, these are some more British birds in an RSPB bird guide. The male is drawn in full. The female is only drawn in the cases where she differs from the male. The male is so much the default, they can't even be bothered with the rest of the female woodpecker. <laughs> All they care about are the tiny little bits where she differs. And you're like, Sally, this is just animals. It doesn't really matter. So if you look at animal studies as a whole, so this was looking at all mammal studies. And remember that mammal studies includes lab rats and lab mice, so they're kind of important studies. 
as a whole, you're five times more likely to get animal studies that only look at male mammals than you are that only look at female mammals. And you'll notice as well that it's only the minor areas of endocrinology, so that's your hormones. No one, there's no hormonal differences between males and females, it's fine. <laughs> um, and pharmacology, so that's drug studies, um, have the worst skew in terms of who, which sex is being studied. Yeah, but that's only mammals, Sally, that's not humans. Except, again, we're so used to male being the default that um, men are a third more likely to be included in drug trials. Yeah, but Sally, that's only the drug trials. It's not like they're giving drugs to women and have no idea what those drugs do for women. Except that women are 60% more likely to be given drugs that just don't work, probably because they were only tested on men. Yeah, but Sally, it's fine. I mean, the drugs just don't work. It's not like they have an adverse reaction that's worse than women. Except, and if you haven't read the book that came out this year, um, Invisible Women, great book. Um, women are more likely to die of a heart attack, even though men are more likely to get a heart attack because the drugs just don't work and the symptoms are only known from like chest pain. You're unlikely to get that if you're a woman and you have a heart attack. So loads of women have heart attacks and don't know they're having one because we only know the male symptoms. Um, paracetamol, I found this one really interesting because I take paracetamol a bit for headaches. Um, women um, are much slower at getting rid of paracetamol and if you've ever taken it, you know that you must never do a drug overdose on it. Like, it's something you can quite easily overdose on. And Ambien, which was a sleeping pill, um, only in the last few years did they give um, women 50% the dose because they would take it last thing at night and first thing in the morning when women went to drive their cars, they would still be feeling the effects of the sleeping pills and causing car crashes. So if you can take one thing from this talk, it's do not assume that male is the default. If you see a bee, you know it's female. But if you see any other animal, say it's female. If you see a frog, say, oh, she's a lovely looking frog. I do that. Um, <laughs> And you'll be surprised when people ask you, well, how do you know it's female? And you get to reply, well, how do you know it's male? Thank you very much.